Hey, TNTM The Show presents Comicast 317 with your host, Pablo Gunner, and I am here to talk nerdy to you about the comics for the week of December 20th. I know it's it's a little late, it's been a little while, but you know, Christmas going on and all, and then work, and then even now, like I wanted to do it sooner, but um, you know, as you may or may not notice, I'm going to be a little stiff just because you know I slept wrong so my neck neck's a little cranky so uh so yeah so anyways like I said I'm going to be reviewing the comics for December 20th be going to give away the digital codes that there are here mostly Marvel there are some DC maybe I don't know uh and yeah so a lot of books this week that's another reason I did not record on the day I intended to which was going to be Friday or Saturday. Both those days were busy, but nonetheless, I had too many books, and I was not ready to record Saturday night, uh, even at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so uh, so here I am doing it now. Um, we have a grade scale here at Talk Nerdy to Me, and for comics, it's buy, skim, pass, and then there's you throw in some extra, which is like strong buy, weak buy, strong skim, weak skim, you know, just give you a stronger idea you know, of that is. So, like, your best buy uh, or your strong buy is, is going to be, like, it's a must-have comic. If you have a limited amount of cash to spend on comics, that's what you want to spend your money on, you know. And then we also have terms like um, runner-up, back and bag. Back and bag is the best book of the week. It's the B-Bow, you know. Put it in that uh, back and bagging. And so truly the back and bag and runner up are the best books. So if you could literally only buy two books a week, those are the two books that you absolutely have to get or should get. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm only one opinion. There's many out there. And if you like different books, that's all good. So I'm not judging you harshly if, if you like different stuff. Uh, but anyways, that's, that's just how we roll here. You know, like I said, week buy is like, Hey, if I got a lot of cash, uh, you know, but I feel like reading more than screw it. I'll, I'll buy it, you know, and then like a strong skim is like, you really got to skim this to see if you like the art or the writing enough, you know, and then, you know, skim is just skim. And then weak skim is like, you know, if you have a lot of extra time on your hands, go ahead and skim it. But you know, it's, it's really not, you know, that much worth your time. And then pass is pass, you know, uh, that's, pretty much it for that uh you know i'm not really going to talk nerdy too much uh i will say like for christmas i want to do a christmas video but if i don't i'll go ahead and kind of do like what i would cover in my christmas video which is i got this shirt from my hermano um and i also got these shopos here um which are like marvel for my parents uh these slippers so I love those. I needed a new pair because my other pair like this, that but they're just plain blue. I can't find the the one of the pairs, so I needed some. So that was great. It's always great to get gifts you need, I think, you know, especially as an adult now. I'm like, I want gifts I need. Uh, <laughs> I could always buy stuff that I want on my own, uh, but that's just because I have, I have money so and if you don't have money then you might want the other but anyways uh the wife also got me wolfenstein 2 the new colossus cannot wait to play that that's gonna be a blast she also got me assassin's creed origins that's another game oh my gosh i've heard so many good things about both of those games um slay j got me a captain america mask uh which is pretty legit but it's huge on me because i have a little peanut head um and uh, he also gave me um, an uh, iTunes gift card, which is great because I love the uh, like buying CDs and music through Apple and stuff like that. And then, you know, other stuff that I might need apps, you know, uh, for here. And then uh, let's see what else. Oh, the wife got me a Captain America shield. I can't believe I didn't bring it in with me, but she got me the legit legends. It's the plastic one, but it's still like pretty heavy duty. And. Uh, I love it. So it's like my new prize possess. And yeah, I, I literally took it with me to work in my car that day. Well, cause I mean, I did gifts. We did gifts like right before I had to go to work. So I was like, oh, I'm going to take it. I didn't show it off to anybody, but 
yeah so that's that's probably my favorite thing right now um i also got like a captain america hoodie i think i want to say from my parents i also got a captain america shirt from my wife's cousin uh and then i got some like some it's kind of like hunting it kind of looks like hunting gear i got from my wife's um aunt and uncle so i'll fit in where i work and warm socks and beanie and stuff like that uh you know and then um i'm trying to think i feel like there's more stuff that i got especially that was like nerdy things but i can't recall oh yeah the wife got me in uh um, a Mass Effect Andromeda hoodie, an initiative hoodie, which I love. I was like, yes, oh, that's so awesome. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of good stuff I got. I want to know what you all got uh, for Christmas this year. Uh, you know, anything, but of course, especially nerdy stuff. So, uh, yeah, um, Star Wars is still raging on. People, more and more people are seeing Star Wars. And more and more people are raging about it, that they love it or that they hate it. And I'm kind of like in between. You know, there's parts that I hate and there's parts that I love. And there's ideas that I like a lot and then there's ideas that I don't like very much. So I'm very still, uh, you know, like, so yeah. Um, but I want to see it again. And I know we're going to buy it on DVD, on Blu-ray. Because I know the wife loves it, especially that shirtless Kylo scene. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for like nerdy stuff right now. Um, yeah. Uh, I do need to download the dark siders and what other games I on PlayStation before the month is over. And I don't know. I thought about getting PlayStation or not PlayStation Xbox live gold, but it's been a pain in the butt to do online. So with, it's just annoying. So I'm like, eh, screw it. Those games don't, don't even look that great. And I really don't have a reason to want to play online with anybody anyways. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's it for now. I'll go ahead and get into these comic books. Uh, and, oh, yeah, I also forgot. I have a timer. It's only a minute. Uh, once again, I do not have um, any new timers because the new iPhone sucks. Be honest. Uh, not the 8. I got the 8, not the... X. I don't know. The X, I think the X seems worse, but I could be wrong. I, I don't have it. My wife got that one. But uh, so I do have a timer. It's only going to be a minute for me. And um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and have this as my timer. And that's it. And uh, I will give the digital codes throughout the podcast. But if they're really, really good, and I think they might be runner up or be about, I will hold them until the end. And then Bebra, uh, Runner Up, and Bebel, I will give away at the end. So that's why you got to stick to the end of the podcast or video, whatever, you know, whichever way you check it out. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's it for now. I'm gonna go ahead and get into this. Cool. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna start with this is a long book, X Men Grand Design by Ed Piscor. It's five ninety nine. Um, yeah, and he pretty much, he does everything, but yeah, this is even the old school paper. It's really, really freaking neat. It's so awesome. Wrong side. And it's just retelling the past, uh, like a lot of the classic Stan Lee stuff. Um, it's retelling that, uh, in a slightly different way. And it was weird. Cause like, while I was reading it, I was like, I don't know if this stuff happened this way. And then it's cool because at the end they have a reference page where he's like, oh, and this is from this, and this is from this, and this is from this, and this is from this. And I'm like, wow, this guy really did his research. And it's a wonderful book. If you're an old school fan, even if you're not an old school fan, I think this is a great way to get caught up. But you're going to love it, especially if you're an old school fan. I think you will absolutely love it if you're an old school fan. Now, I don't have the classic works of the um, Stan Lee stuff. I don't. I'll be honest. Uh, and that's why another reason why I love this because it was a great rehash of all of that within a short amount of pages. Uh, so that being said, totally worth the cover price. Lots of content here. Like I said, totally old school, especially the feel of the pages and everything, the way that it looks. I love it. I give it a strong buy. I would even dare to say that it is a contender for this week. No digital code, sorry. Next, I picked up 
Uh, Fate of the Four. Uh, it's Marvel Two and One, The Thing, and Human Torch. Fate of the Four Part One. Um, yeah. So we have Chip Zdarsky as the writer, Jim Chung as the penciler, John Dell with Walden Wong as inks, and then Frank Martin as colorist. And so it starts off with Johnny, and he's doing a race car, but. He's pushing the car too hard and it's heating up and then he heats up and he, you know, they think like, oh my God, something horrible happened to him. He comes out, he's, you know, covered in flames because he's the torch. So, and then you have Ben Grimm and he's at this special award ceremony for the Fantastic Four. He gets a little teary-eyed giving his speech and stuff. Not sure if anybody can really tell, but then somebody shows up and, uh, you know, he, the thing helps this guy, this uh, Spidey guy. Uh, with this guy and then they're like hey man i'm really you know johnny storm if you've been reading the other chip zadarsky book the spectacular spider-man he's been talking to johnny storm and i think some other books too where he's just worried about him and so he's like hey can you talk to torch he, he seems really reckless he needs somebody then doom shows up and doom's like hey i stole something from the baxter building but apparently can only be activated by you so here it is he gets into a fight with him and then like Doom, Doom like gets pissed and he's about to mess him up. And then he's like, oh, no, 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 I'm reformed. I'm trying to be good. He leaves. Johnny Storm's doing some more crazy stuff. Turns out his powers are fading and, um, you know, Ben Grimm lies to Johnny and is like, I think he might be alive. I got this thing and I think he might be alive. So, which they are, they are alive. They're just rebuilding the multiverse. So it's not really a lie. So this might be a book that brings the Fantastic Four back into the fold, especially now that Marvel has Fantastic Four back in their fold. So uh, as far as movies go, so now this would be a good time to ramp up for some Fantastic Four love, starting with these two buddies. So which they kind of dislike each other, but they're family. So they actually work. You know, it's, I, I, I really like it. This is really well written and really well done, and I like it a lot. And so, I think it's 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 definitely worth checking out. I, it looks phenomenal. It's really emotional, um, and I'm interested to see where it goes. So this is another one. Strong buy, contender. Uh, you know what? I will give the digital code away though. Uh, F for fantastic. M for camp. M for Melvin, uh, five, seven, K for Kang, five, C for Cable, S for Super, six, N for Nova, and one. Next, I have Defenders, which if you have not heard, Defenders will be canceled. It will be canceled. I don't know if that's because Bendis is leaving, the, leaving Marvel altogether, or just because this book isn't popular enough, which I don't know why, but it's wonderful. But, you know, I'll give you one reason why. I don't think JD picks it up. But So that's one person right there of the two of us that aren't picking it up. So if only half the people amongst two people are picking it up that are comic book guys, that's not a good sign. So, but anyways, might be because he's leaving. Uh, anyways, this is the Defenders number eight. Kingpins of New York, and we have writer Brian Michael Bendis, artist David Marquez with Michael Avon Oeming, and then color artist Justin Ponsor. I love these intro pages. This one is like someone uh, they're bringing in the Punisher, and they do a recap of what happened in the previous issue. Really well done. So yeah, and you have these three folks. They're hanging out, and they're like just playing Monopoly and stuff. And then Diamondback rolls in, and he's like, "You know what? This is the place." This place has a lot of history. This is where the Kingpin decided to take over, and this is how he did it. And he knew everybody that was in the room. He didn't take any chances. He knew exactly what he was doing. He paid everybody more than what than Don Rigoletto paid everybody else, and that's why he owned everyone. And that's why I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pay everybody, and they're like, we're not doing the job. And then one guy's like, I'll let how much you paying? And so the flashbacks are uh, the other art, and it's a thematic change, so it works phenomenally well. Totally knocked the park. That indeed it did. Uh, then the rest is them dealing with Deadpool. It's the uh, uh, the 
defenders dealing with Deadpool and they're like, hey, what's up with you and stuff? And then it's crazy because they're like, how come you shot at us? And it's like, Deadpool's like, how can I not shoot at Luke Cage? You know, like he's bulletproof. I'm trying to stop myself from doing it now. And I think he even does it. It's ridiculous. And they're like, well, who brought him into this? And uh, yeah, it was it was Jessica. And she's like, I'm sorry. We're de- kind of desperate with things going on and getting information. And Deadpool's crazy. So it didn't work because he was like, well, I was trying to have an in with with Punisher, but then I, I had to stop him from killing Deadpool, or I mean, uh, Daredevil. Oh, and that's the other thing is Daredevil reveals himself in this, and it was super anticlimactic the way it was done. Like, I don't know what is up with with uh, Bendis, but, like, he has been really awful at reveals lately. Like, the reveal of Riri as Ironheart, I don't even remember that moment. This is a forgettable moment, too, because the way that it, like, it wasn't this huge, like, leading up to this climax, and then, boom, reveal. It was just kind of like he was sick of them bitching at him, and then he was like, fine, here. And they're like, and then they were disappointed, too. It wasn't like, oh, my God, we're totally blown away by this, you know? They were like, I knew it, you know, like, one I, one of them. And it was like, come on. Like, the, I don't know. It was just, Bendis is better than this, and I don't know what's going on with him. Like, he's just not, he's not at the top of his game. I don't know what's going on, but it's still a solid book. I like it a lot. I will give it a strong buy. I'm not going to give it a contender. But here's the digital code. F for Familia, Z for Zorro, M for Marcos, R for Rigoberto, X for Xavier, N for Novella, X for Xavier, 1, S for Senorita, N for Novella, Z for Zorro, Q for Quintana. Moving on. We have Miss Marvel, number 25, Teenage Wasteland, part one. G. Willow Wilson is a writer. Nico Leon is the artist. Ian Herring is the color artist. Yes, yes, indeed. And so this one, we have these faux Miss Marvels that are stopping, you know, crime and stuff. And, yeah, they're just dressing up as her, but it's not actually her, you know, to stop crime and stuff like that. And then this guy gets involved. Also, there's somebody at the beginning who was like the first main villain is getting released from prison. So that's a thing. And I think this person has a new plan that comes into play here. And like I said, they're taking turns like pretending to be Miss Marvel along with this guy. And I'm like, well, what is this Scarlet guy or whatever doing? Because he doesn't really seem like he's doing much. He does do stuff in this. He teams up with Miss Marvel, uh, with the faux Miss Marvel in this. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's ends up pretty crazy. So I think we're going to need Miss Marvel, but it's weird. Like, where is she? I don't know where she's at. And like, why would she just be gone? Like, she's not going to, I don't think she's going to school. I don't think she's doing anything. Like she's legit just gone. So it's a little weird. I thought like she was just going to quit being Miss Marvel, not like quit being Kamala Khan, you know? So that's a little odd. But yeah, still really solid book uh, and really interesting, and I'm really interested to see where it goes. So I'm going to give it a strong buy and a contender, but I will give away the digital code. F for Famicom, C for Cambodia, M for Milton, S for Slayer, L for Lupito. I don't know what that was. Uh, One, F for Frank, G for Grand, S for Super, C for camp, K for kill. I think I'm getting worse at this. I'm tired. Uh, Next, I got a random book out of nowhere, uh, Uncanny Avengers, number 30. It's Stars and Goddess. And so, yeah, it's, I don't even know. It's, I think I picked it up because I saw who was writing it. I was like, who's the writer in this? And I was like, oh, it's Jim Zub, artist Sean Izaxi, uh, and then color artist Tamara Bonvillain. So I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. I might have skimmed it before I actually bought it, and it looked interesting. You have Wonder Man and Scarlet Witch, and they're chatting, and she's just like, yeah, I'm not ready for I don't, like, I'm not, you know, I, I don't really want a relationship. Like, I want to be friends. And he's like, all right, whatever. Then you have Torch. And you have Rogue, and they seem like they have a little flame going on. 
uh, which is nice. And like he got all the money now, and he's like, "Hey, I bought a Avengers Mansion and stuff, so now we can do that." And then there's some other stuff going on with other people that I have no idea who they are, so that was inconsequential to me. Um, we have a little Pietro stuff there that's related to that. And then we have back to Wanda, and she is now pursuing a relationship with Brother Voodoo because she wants to explore, like, I don't know. She It's weird because it's like she wants to be with him, but she wants to be with him so they can both explore magic together and, like, spirituality. So it's kind of weird that there's, like, a motivation behind it. And then you have Herman Schultz and Rogue speaks on his behalf in court. And Cap shows up at the end to have a chat with Rogue and stuff. And, yeah, it's really weird. It's really weird because they're like, yeah, Unity Squad. And I'm like, I thought you guys were the Uncanny Avengers. You know what I mean? Like, you're supposed to be, like, a combination of X-Men and Avengers and maybe even Inhumans. Why would that – Unity Squad just seems like a horrible name for a team. You have Avengers, you have Defenders, you have X-Men. You know, like, you guys can't come with, like, you know, Avengers – X Avengers or no, that sounds too weird. But you know what I mean? Like Uncanny Avengers, I think sounds cool, you know, because it's like, hey, we're the Uncanny X-Men mixed with Avengers. But there's Inhumans, which are just Inhumans or the Inhuman Avengers. I don't know. But I know there's a better name out there. But this was a really solid issue, even though it was like a one shot and it was like a clawing, uh tying loose ends and stuff like that. I really enjoyed it. It looks really great. Uh, it's enjoyable. And it says uh, it's, it says never the end. Um, so, But I think it might be the end of this title, but I'm not sure because now they're continuing like an event that's just called Avengers No Surrender. And so I think it's going to be a weekly thing with all the different Avengers books because there's multiple – because there's – I think there's Avengers. There's Uncanny Event. I don't know what else there is. Uh, there used to be Mighty Avengers. I don't know if that's still a thing, but yeah. So yeah, it's I liked it a lot, and it was pretty cool. And even though there was some stuff that I was a little lost, I felt like they still did a pretty solid job with it. So yeah, I'm I'll give it a strong buy. It looks really great. I like the idea of these, uh, you know, of at least the Rogue and Human Torch romance going on. I like that one. Um, but yeah, uh, so I I want to give it a strong buy, not quite a contender. Here's the code. F for Familias, E for Zoro, and for Marco, 7-2, R for Rigoberto, U for Uganda, I for Ignacio, B for Barrio Nuevo, T for Tomas, R for Rigoberto, 1. Uh, this is another book right here that is going to be canceled, which is very unfortunate. It only has a few more issues. I think it's ending at – it's Generation X. This is number 85, but it's, I think it's ending on 89, which is sad because it's a really solid book. This one is actually Survival of the Fittest Part 1. We have writer Christina Strain, artist Amilcar Pina, colorist Felipe Sobiero, and then, uh, yeah. So we have uh, Quentin, and he's on some beach somewhere, and someone's texting him, and he's just ignoring him, you know, because he's all hurt that they didn't stop him before he left, but he's a little whiny baby. So, uh, And then you have um, – what's her name? Uh, Jubilee and Jono. They've been getting really close and stuff. He's been helping with the kid a lot. The kid is scared of her because she went all vamp mode. Um And then they're also worried – they're kind of worried about, you know, they're I don't know, they're just having like these – uh, not lovers' trysts, but like just a little drama here and there uh, between some of the characters, between these two dudes and stuff. And they're like, oh, hey, what's going on? You guys dating it or something? Or you guys whatever? And they're like, oh, we're just friends. And then it makes awkward for the other person and then for both of them and then stuff. And then just the way the other – and then the parenting that's going on between these two is funny and stuff. And then uh, this, this sesh between Paige and Roxy, you know, yeah. There's just so much going on in this book, and that's what I love, is that there's a lot going on in this book, and it's like, it seems, it just seems so long because there's so much in here, and it's not even wordy. Like, I love it. It's so good. It feels like, 
not classic X-Men, but like very Generation X, you know? Uh, and that's what I love about it. And the art is a little weird, and it takes a little getting used to, and it can be off-putting. And then some crazy stuff happens at the end. So I definitely want to check out the next issue. So this one is definitely going to be a strong buy and a contender. But I'll go ahead and give away the digital code. F for Fantastic, C for Crash, M for Mark, Y for Yank, B for Bones, U for Ultron, U for Ultron, G for Jono, 1, M for... Mark, W for Wilson, and D for Don. On to the next book. It is Tales of Suspense uh, featuring Hawkeye and the Winter Soldier. It's actually Tales of Suspense 100 because it's a legacy issue. It's Red Ledger Part 1 of 5. We have... Matthew Rosenberg as the writer. We have Foreman as the artist. And then Rochelle Rosenberg as the travel foreman as a color artist. And then Rochelle Rosenberg as the color artist. So travel foreman is the main artist. But yeah, so it is essentially Hawkeye. And he's at this funeral and he's pretending to be Hydra and stuff and he's doing a bad job of it because he's not good at it and then they like realize who he is and then he just unleashes on them and stuff and like burns the whole place down at this funeral home of this guy that i think is hydra because he got taken out and they're like i think he's like i think natasha is taking out all these hydra operatives um and then he goes to another place to track her down chernaya i think or something like that and so he's like oh i think i see her and he's trying to get into this embassy he finds a way in and then somebody shows up, Das Vinta Solja. And he's like, oh, you're here to kill this guy. And he's like, no, I'm here to stop him from getting killed. And he's like, well, what are you doing? He's like, I'm here to do the same thing. Well, why are we fighting then? I was like, oh, well, I think that Natasha is here. And Oh, here's her symbol. Oh, well, that means that she made the kill. Wait, how did she make the kill if he's not dead? Oh, crap. And then, yeah. It's crazy. It's awesome. It's great. It looks phenomenal. And this is freaking great. I've been wanting a story like this for a long time with these two teaming up because they both have a love for Natasha Romanov. And so even though I like the idea of Bucky with her better. Uh, so, but yeah, it's, it's a superb issue. It's, it's really interesting. It's really fun. It's really great. I kind of hope they kind of do a back and forth where it's like, Hey, this is a Hawkeye issue. This is a Winter Soldier issue. But as long as it works, it works. You know, that's all I care about. So, but yeah, this is a phenomenal issue. I'm tempted to hold on to the digital code because it's so good. So I think I actually will. But yeah, it's that being said, of course, it sh it's a strong buying contender. All righty. Next, I'm moving on to Luke Cage, number 168. It is David F. Walker as the writer, Guillermo Sana as the artist, Miroslav Merva as the color artist. And so these issues, they don't start off where they left off, so it can be a little confusing. But in that instance, it's also kind of good for new readers to jump on because you don't need to know what happened before necessarily. Yeah, but in this one, it's like, oh, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, there's these guys and they're just burying all this nuclear waste or something like that. And then 10 years after that, there's people, you know, that are building a building over it. And they're like, oh, it's a prison. Who cares? Then this guy who's been controlling everybody with his mind powers, he and his powers get stronger. And then you see that his that he runs stuff and then he's having people bury up this waste again and so he's using this waste to make his powers more powerful so he can control the whole town you know of course they treat the prisoners badly and everything like that luke gets involved and stuff and yeah it's pretty nuts it's pretty crazy i love the way this book is so well written that it makes you forget that luke is luke so when they shoot at him you're like oh crap 
and then you remember that he's bulletproof, and then you're like, oh, I was worried about nothing. But it's still nice that they put that intensity in there, you know, that they they make you forget because he's like he doesn't remember who he is. So you're just like he's just a, a dude, you know, that's a inmate at this point. So the art is not like the best to look at, but it's not bad either. It fits the book, I think, especially the tone of it with them being in prison and just the way that things are, you know, going all about it. So yeah, uh, I give it a strong buy. Um, it's not, I don't know, it's better than the last issue for sure. And it's really interesting, but I think there's a, a couple missteps. So I'm going to give it a strong buy, but not a contender. Here's the, the digital code. F for Familia Z, Z for Zorro, and for Marcos, X for Xavier, V for Villanueva, B for Barrio, T for Tomas, 0, 4, P for Pedro, 0, and J for Josefina. Alrighty, now I have Dark Fang Issue 2. This is written by Miles Gunter, artist is Kelsey Shannon, letter Taylor Esposito. So this is one that picks up somewhere else, uh, you know, where it's, she's like back at the mansion. She's doing like something where she's, you know, these, they're like the witches. They're not witches. They're the like wives of the wives' heads of Dracula. And she like gives blood to them and then communicates with them to tell her like what's going on because her fang has turned black. And they're like, oh, she wants to know what's wrong with her. She can't really figure it out. And then they find out like, okay, well, you know, there's this well that poisoned the water and it's poisoning the animals. And because she, she was in the water for so long, do so you think it's maybe taking effect on her? She turns into a shark. He, she trashes this this oil platform. And then she finds the guy that is the, that owns it, you know, the company dude and stuff. And she can like hypnotize people too. So she like finds out like where he gets his contract and then she kills him and stuff. And I really don't care. I don't care. The way that this story is going, I think it's it went it took a quick turn to garbage. Not garbage, like it doesn't look bad, and there's some remnants of like, all right, this is kind of interesting, but not enough for me to keep reading because I'm like, what are you gonna do? Take on the United States government because that's where she's going next. And just like the way, like you turn into a shark, what the fuck is that about? You know, like what the hell is that? You know, I, I I'm, it doesn't even make sense. Especially like the leap that they made from the last book to this one, you know, I just feel like you're skipping a lot of parts and I don't like that at all. I just don't think it's very well done. So I'm not impressed. Like it looks pretty solid and it's decent, but decent is not what I read. I only like to read the best of the best and that's it. Like, you know, otherwise I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting my money. I, uh, I already read way too many books. I don't need to read mediocre ones. And that's what this is. This is mediocre. And mediocre falls into the category of not buy. It's definitely not a buy. I would say that this, especially this one, I'll give it a skim. I give it a skim because that's the thing is if you skim it, like my wife did, she liked the art. And hey, the art looks pretty solid. I won't deny that. But the writing, don't care for it. Not worth it. So after reading one issue, okay, interesting. Second issue, done. So that's how what I have to say about that one. Alrighty, next I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ooh, look at this nice, neat cover. Uh, feels good too. It's uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe number 17, 499. And this is the part two of everything from the last one, which is From the Heart for the Herd part two. Writer Chris Mowry, artist Giannis Milo Giannis, Milo no Giannis, and then colorist Laverne Kainzerski, Zierski, and then this one's Triceratops, part two, writer Eric Anderson, and artist Michael Dialnas. So yeah, this is just a continuation. They have to decide, like, hey, what are we going to do from here? You know, are we going to go against uh, the Krang or what? And so they're like, all right, well, I'll stay here. You scary the get the troops out of here before they know, and then we can attack them uh, as a united front. And so they do attack them, but then like the general never 
I don't think she actually leaves their side. She just kind of is sticking to the side of of Krang because she doesn't, I don't know why, but doesn't really want to abandon him. And and they're doing well too. They're like, you know, doing a really good job, you know, of, of, of this situation and stuff. And then, yeah, it leads into them going to the next place. And then the next one is, you know, them as the little, now they're not like little kids. Now they're like kids being trained. They're not just, you know, infants anymore. And so you see their training and stuff and how hardcore it is and stuff like that and uh, and the good that they do and stuff like that and uh, how devoted they are even as children uh, to this cause. So, yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's just one of those things that I kind of wish I would have gotten the first part as one and then, and you know, like the first story complete and then this second little kid story complete. But I don't know. I don't really care for... Oh, I didn't, I didn't feel like they're essential. So I give it a week by, you know, if you're a hardcore, you got to collect them all, got to catch them all. And, uh, yeah, so it was, it it's not bad. It doesn't look bad. It's interesting. It's just, I'm like, okay, I get it. All right. So week by for me. Now I have Power Rangers number 22, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, yeah, it is written by Kyle Higgins, illustrated by Jonas Scharf, uh, colors by Joanna Lafuente, letters by Ed Dukeshire. And then we have The Ongoing Misadventures of Scott and Babu at the end, which is written by Ryan Ferrier, illustrated by Bacan, and then colors by Triona Farrell, letters by Jim Campbell. So this one is, um, you know, Rita is going to this guy and she needs something. And then we have Zordon. He's returned and they start asking Zordon all these questions like, why didn't you tell us all this stuff? And he's like, there's good reason for it. Just be weary of her, you know. And then Sabu tries to make a deal with Finster and Finster's like, screw you, this deal is trash. Um, but he's kind of interested a little bit. And then they come up with a way so that they can take off their masks, but, like, you know, they're still masked, essentially. Like, they can't see their faces. And they have a little chat with this this lady, and it's getting really interesting, too, because they have an ulterior motive. And then the Squat and Babu stuff is interesting because, like, now they're the heroes, and they defeated the Power Rangers in this future timeline. Uh, so, yeah, it's that this one was fun, and I liked it. It was enjoyable, and it worked really well. It looks... It's a different artist, but, man, they just keep on getting artists that are really, really solid and consistent. And that's what matters most in comics is consistency. If you change an artist, at least make the, make sure they look similar. But writers, that's another one you have to keep consistent for sure because if they're not, you're constantly changing writers, then it's, it's not consistent in any way. So, uh, yeah. So it is a strong buy. I would even give it a contender because, like, even this, the backstory was really solid and all of it was really good. I mean, just see what comes. You know, that's a big factor for me. Uh, so, yeah, strong by contender. On to Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, number two of six. It's three ninety nine. Uh, we have James Cine on the fourth as a writer. Uh, Williams the second as the artist and then Caldwell and so we have Batman and he goes to uh, Ra's al Ghul and he's like hey you know I kind of need help Freddie Williams the second is the artist yeah Jeremy Caldwell's colors uh, anyways so yeah and then it jumps into uh, Captain Cold or not Captain Cold uh, Mr. Freeze <laughs> and it's Donnie and uh, Robin and they're going after him and they're like, Hey, this isn't going to work. You know, Donnie's telling Robin, Robin of course doesn't listen. Then they make like a little sled out of it and stuff. And then they stop him, which was really cool. And then Batgirl is there and they're talking to, uh, Lucius Fox about this portal and stuff. And then you see how, uh, Bebop and Rocksteady, they're going to go up against Bane, but then they're like, Nope. All right. We'll kneel. Cause Bane just looks like a force to be reckoned with. Mikey's beat up. Everybody's kind of like hurting. Then Batman shows up and they're like, all right, let's do this. And then they blame Donnie. And then even Shredder's like, I mean, Splinter's like, hey, don't be so harsh on Donnie because I'm sure he's already, you know, 
uh, beating himself up enough. Uh, and and that's and that's a very good point. Is that there's certain people out there that you don't have to beat them up because they are already beating themselves up. I'm one of those people. So when you start to go at me and be like, you effed up and you screwed up, you're an idiot. Then I go into like defense attack mode where I'm like, really, I screwed up. This is how you screwed up. I know I screwed up, but you screwed up this, 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 and this way. So then I go into, like I said, defensive attack mode. So that's not a position you, you want to put me in. Uh, much less those kinds of people because those people have already beat themselves up. They know what they did wrong. So that's why, you know, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that don't like taking responsibility for their actions and they don't, you know, think they're in the wrong. But I usually start there, you know, and then, you know, realize more and more down the way what I did wrong and then what I can do better the next time. So coming at me after the fact, you know, um, this is not the right way to go. Okay. So anyways, enough about me. This is you my I just like to relate to Donnie and well just all any of the turtles. I this is a book that I love to see. I can't wait to see them take on uh Bane with the Foot Clan with Bebop and Rocksteady. It's going to be epic with Batman and the Ninja Turtles and Robin and I don't know did Bad Girl come on over to it's going to be a blast. The last one was a blast. This one's a blast. So cool, looks so superb. Love it. It's so fantastic. It's a strong buy and a contender. Speaking of, uh, we have a little book called Dark Knight's Metal, number four. Check out this wicked cover. It's so metal, right? You got to love it. Uh, it's Scott Schneider as the writer, of course. And then we have Greg Capullo as the inker, I want to say, Jonathan Galapian as the penciler, and then FCO Placencia as colors. And this one, it's interesting because it's actually done with, you know, like it's retelling of a story sort of here, you know. Uh, it's really cool. But it's just one page, and then it goes into like this past, the dark multiverse. Someone's trying to save them and or trick them. I don't know. It's hard to figure out, you know. That's that's what I love about this. Uh, it's freaking amazing. And then, like, it goes into the battle of, like, Fate and Wonder Woman. And so it's all these different teams. In the last book, we had them splitting up into teams, going, like, we're all going to go to different locations to find different artifacts or different um, pieces of nth metal because we know that's their weakness. So that's what they do. And, of course everything comes with a catch. Like they go to Thanagar Prime and they're like, oh yeah, well there's this situation going on and, you know, Starro is there somehow. And all the while they're like weaving this other stuff in with Batman and Superman stuck in the dark multiverse. And uh, yeah, it's just freaking wicked and looks awesome. Uh, you know, and we also have like Hawk Girl, but I don't think she's like Hawk Girl yet. You know, um, or something else, uh, you know, yeah, it's just so many crazy appearances, you know, of all these different people and creatures and stuff. It's, it's one of those things where, like, you're slowly getting hope, but you're also, like, getting kicked in the dirt a little more, so it's not exactly what I was looking, like, they give you a little hope, but I really think, like, this is star, I think it's the beginning of the turning tide, uh, the next one's gonna come, so this one, it was still a downer, so but there was a little hope in there sprinkled throughout. You know, it's one of those things where, like, even in this, like, they're going on and doing these things, and it feels like two steps forward, one step back, you know, or or one step forward, two steps back, you know, like, it, it depended on the situation. But, yeah, so it's really crazy. It's really hardcore. It's really awesome. I already know that this is going to be phenomenal in trade. It's pretty wicked in issues. It's been a while, I feel like, since we've gotten another issue. So it would have been kind of good to read uh, issue three and then this, you know. And then there's all the tie-ins, too. Uh, and I feel like it's been a while since we had a tie-in as well. So it's, there's, there's, it's like there's something missing that's keeping us in it, you know. And, and – that's that's the only thing that's like kind of missing from this, which I kind of really does have nothing to do with this book specifically. This book was really solid. 
I would give it a strong buy and a contender, of course. And that's it. It is time for a commercial break to talk about one of our sponsors. And I'm going to be talking about the grand old Gamers Anonymous. Because they just had a freaking awesome trade-in recently. And there was tons of games. I actually went. I went there. I know it was around Christmas. And I was like, you're not supposed to be getting stuff for yourself around Christmas. But this isn't like I'm getting my stuff stuff for Christmas. I'm getting stuff that I've been missing from my collection from a long time. It's not really like huge stuff. I just... As a comic book nerd, I want all the comic book related video games. And I like a lot of the comic book related video games. It's just crazy though cuz like I didn't have a list, like I wasn't really planning it. So I went and I didn't have a list of what I already have, but I did get quite a few games. In fact, I should just walk over here and grab the games that I got. This is I wonder if this is horrible. This is horrible television here, or whatever it is. Uh, it's horrible, horribleness. Um, I know I got some freaking good stuff. I might There might be more stuff in here that I didn't even notice. Uh, so, yeah, but anyways, I got um, Batman uh, Revenge of the Joker. I don't remember playing it, but I'm... Definitely want to check it out. It was ex it was a little expensive, so I'm assuming that it's pretty solid or, or somewhat rare. I got Wolverine Admantium Rage. I don't remember if that's good or not. I'm trying to think, but yeah, that's one game I got. I got Justice League Task Force, which is it's just like a Justice League fighting game. I don't remember it being very good, but it's like I got to have it. It has like long hair Superman. And then I got Batman Returns, which I remember being kind of awful, but you got to have it. These are classics. So they had a lot of more other stuff. They had Turtles in Time. They also had uh, the, um, like the Sega version, which was more expensive. Uh, my wife got me Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo, but I want the one for for the Sega just because I'm more of a Sega guy. It was like something like something about some gem or something like that. Uh, time gem or g I don't know. But anyways, heist gem, gem. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, they had tons of stuff there. And not just they had like Super Nintendo. There was Nintendo, Super Nintendo. Like pretty much every single thing. And I guess it's just like some guy just traded in all his collection or most of it. Uh, cause I think he's making a move or something like that. But anyways, that's always great when you get those. So that is at the gamers anonymous location off of it's 1512 C Wyoming Boulevard, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, eight, seven, one, one, two. The number is five, zero, five, three, three, two, zero, seven, one, seven. Or you can go to their website at G a retro.com, uh, opens at 10 closes at eight. So that's 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. or 2000. Uh, yeah, and so you should follow them on Facebook. You should follow their get in their community group because uh, John Sakura, the owner, is always asking some awesome questions and stuff and doing giveaways. Uh, and always they always have discounts and they always have deals. And there's man, there are so many deals. It was ridiculous. And it was great because I was actually going to get less games. But I realized I had 100 points because they have a reward, reward system. that It's like a five-star reward system. And so for each dollar or free, yeah, for each dollar, it's a point, I think. And so I already had 100 points. And they're like, oh, you can get $10 off. And I was like, okay. So then I bought that. And then they're like, oh. And then I went and got a couple more. I caught a couple more games that I had put in back. And then I grabbed those. And they're like, by the way, you're at 100 points again. Of course, I couldn't use that 100 points for that purchase, but next time I go, I can use it for that purchase. So, and they always have like random, like with that reward system, they'll give you like randomly like 10%, 15%, sometimes even 20%, you know, and stuff like that. And sometimes if you just get a lot of stuff, they'll give you a discount because they're great like that. So yeah, definitely go check them out and buy stuff from them. It's not just retro stuff, but it is mostly retro stuff. And uh, they have a lot of great stuff there. It's right next to Domino's. And so it's always great to get pizza there. You can game there actually because they have a they have a screen and they have a couch 
and it's kind of like in a garage sort of i mean it's a business but you know and it's it's yeah and you can sit in there and play video games it was just it was so cool so great and then they always have a cat there oh i couldn't find the cat it was hidden pretty good so she was a little sad uh but yeah um so that is it uh, about gamers anonymous make sure like i said check them out online for sure i'm gonna get back to some comics starting with superman number 37 it's super sons of tomorrow part one this is 2.99 we have peter j tomasi patrick gleason as writers I want to say Jorge Jimenez as the artist, Alejandro Sanchez as colorist, probably as letterier. So it starts off, and we have Batman attacking Bruce Wayne. And you're like, what? Oh, it is Tim Drake of the future attacking Bruce Wayne. He essentially immobilizes him. Then he goes to immobilize Superman. Because apparently in the future, um, Jonathan Kent uses like his explosion move, like the, and he does it over Metropolis and destroys Metropolis. So he's trying to stop that from happening. And so he has this plan to take down Batman, of course, and take down Superman, of course, so that he can then take down Superboy uh, and deal with him so his future doesn't come to fruition. Uh, yeah, and then they have this uh, they have this teaser at the end of this new book called The Silencer. It's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, this book was really solid. It was pretty cool, pretty interesting. Um, and I can't wait to read the next issue. But the next issue is now. So that one, I'm going to give that one a strong buy and a contender. It looked really great and it was really interesting. And move on to part two with Super Sons of Tomorrow Part Two. It's Super Sons number 11. And this one's 399. So it does have a digital code. Art is different in this, though. We have Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason still writing, but we have uh, different artists on this book here. I'll tell you later about that. So, yeah, it's these. It's a different art, so you know you, you can tell it's different. He's uh, surveilling uh, Lois Lane and Superboy, and then it's it's funny because like then it switches over to the Teen Titans and they're doing a mission. They're getting their butts kicked, and then some blur helps them, and they're like, "Oh, I know." The Robin's like, "I know who it is," or somebody figures out. I think it's, and they're like, "Oh, it's Superboy." And they're like, "You can't be part of the team. You know, you're not a teen." And they're like, oh, well, you promised that you could be part of the mission. And then his team's like, hey, you know, you can't make a decision that on your own. And uh, and so then Tim Drake, he finds out, Tim Drake, Batman, he finds out, he goes, and he goes to the Teen Titans Tower and deals with them. But then it seems like that the people, the super people of his, his time are like, oh, we need to go retrieve him and deal with him. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, right. Oh yeah. Penciler, Ryan Benjamin, um, inker, Richard friend, Gabe El Taib is colorist. Now I like this idea. I think it's really interesting. I think it's really intriguing. Uh, my only problem is, is that we already had this story arc like in the Batman books and I liked it in the Batman books. The problem is that like you didn't waste any time before he's returning. So why would you? Why would he not just try to go back and fix what he was doing in that time, or with the Bat People, since it's so soon after? Give it some time. Give it like a month, two months, you know, a few months maybe. Then have him come back, you know, and then attack um, Superboy. You know what I mean? Like that makes more sense. This is too soon. Like it's it it's too fresh in my mind, and for me to go like oh. We just had this. I don't need a repeat of it, except it's him going after the super Superboy instead of going after Batwoman, which was a failure. So why wouldn't he just learn from his failures? He failed on that. Why, or why isn't he just... It didn't make sense to me, partially. So it's, it's solid, but I just too soon. 
So I still give it a strong buy, but I don't know. It just bugs me. So here's the digital code. DC for Detective Comics, 917. C for Camp. Uh, K for Kill, 49. F for Frank. 3. R for Rick. J for Jones. Next, it's Hombre de Agua. It's Aquaman number 31. This one is 399. Does have a digital code. Uh, it is Dan Abnett's story, but different artists, Ricardo Federici, uh, and then Sunny Go as colors. So the art is different, but it's in a similar vein uh, because it's, it is very flashy and showy uh, and stuff like that. And so this one, you really have Aquaman taking the fight uh, to this crew because they're like trying to kill some people off. And they're like, come on, man, you've got to be part of our crew. You've got to be our leader. You've got to be our replacement and stuff. And like these like nuns or whatever, they're like, oh, that's fine if he doesn't want to be the leader. We'll put our own leadership into play. Um, and so he has to go into the like ninth tried and deal with King Shark which actually doesn't look that terrifying. Um, he just looks like a mutant uh, person and stuff. And I just, I really like how now he's like down there, you know, and he's getting to know the people. And so now he can get the people to follow him from down there. But then you see Mira and for whatever reason, she can't breathe in the water. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why, but not so much. I don't know why it doesn't make sense to me, but I don't know why she can't breathe it down there. That does, that's, didn't make sense to me from the beginning, still doesn't, um, but yeah, whatever. It's a solid book, though. I give it a strong buy. It's really solid. I enjoy it. I give it a strong buy. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, it looks superb, but uh, just there's small things about the story that just kind of just kind of irk me. Um, so that's why it's a strong buy, not contender. Here's digital code DC for Detective Comics 917-53, D for Dam, W for Wake 4, 8, M for Mark, Z for Zone. Moving on to Nightwing number 35. This is 299. We have a different writer on this, Sam Humphreys. Um and it's just different creative team altogether, I believe. But anyways, it starts with this guy, and he's talking to this lady, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, deep down, you just want your friends to be afraid of you. They're at, you know, at a casino and stuff. There's this guy, he, he looks like a shark, but, you know, and, and, like, she whispers something to him, and then she attacks the bartender, slits his freaking throat. Um, you know, Nightwing is off. He's doing something else. He's fighting this, like, limousine gang and stuff he has flashbacks to batman and stuff he's icing down he has his new business where he's a he's a trainer he's like a fit fit trainer or what is it called the that new crossfit trainer pretty much and then he interrogates that uh the shark guy and stuff wants to know what happened at that place he gives a little tip to the um to the uh police officer but the police officer I think somebody whispered something to her, too, because she seems a little bit off. Um, yeah, uh, Bernard Chang is the artist, and Marcelo Maiolo is colors. But, yeah, it's 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 a different, like I said, it's uh, Sam Humphreys, so different writer, a uh, slightly different tone. Um, I'm not sure what to think of it yet. Uh, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. You know me, I always love my dick. Can't get enough dick, personally. Um, if I can get more, I will. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we'll see where it goes. It's interesting. I like it. This villain is somebody he knows already. So revealing that he knows the villain that already takes away a certain level of intrigue as well as a certain level of, you know, mystery and just fear. Cause as we've heard the enemy, you know, you don't fear as much, and then the one that you don't know, you fear a lot more. I mean, I know that's that's not the exact proverb, um, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, it's a solid book. I like it. I enjoy it. So 
I'll I'll give it a I'll give it a strong buy. On to Green Lanterns number thirty-seven. This is two ninety-nine. We have Tim Seeley, who used to write Nightwing, is now writing Green Lanterns. I think he has been. But uh, for pencils, it's Carlo Barbari, inks Matt Santorelli, colorist Ulysses Ariola. And so the Lanterns are on this planet, and they're dealing with this situation because uh, two people have been kidnapped by the Molites, supposedly. They think they've been murdered, but they're not sure. Uh, then they, like, have a talk with this lady that's the leader, and the way that she likes to chat and helps her think is through fighting. So they're like, all right, when in Rome, they, you know, make, like, these crazy outfits that are similar to their, hers, and they fight it out. Then they find a way to sneak into where the Molites are, then the Moiloids, the females are going nuts, and they're like, why? And so they make constructs of babies, and so they're distracted for a little while, and then, like, their leader explains, like, oh, they had babies, but someone destroyed the eggs, and that's why they're freaking out, and so they hunt the scent of whoever it is that killed them, and that's what it is, and he's like, what happened is someone came in, and I killed this person because of my greed. And then this other person that uh, Simon is messing around with reveals that she was involved to a certain degree. So that's all I'm going to reveal. It's interesting. It's messed up. It's crazy. Can't wait to read more and see what comes of all of this because you think it's resolved and it's not. So yeah, that's going to be awesome and it's going to be superb. So yeah, strong buy and a contender for sure. Speaking of, we have Batman Double Date. It's number 37. This is $2.99. We have uh, Tom King as the writer, um, Clay Mann as the artist, Jordi Belair as the colorist. So they go to, they for their double date, Lois Lane, um, Clark Kent, Selena Kyle, Bruce Wayne, They for their double date, they decide to go to a the, the Gotham county fair but it's superhero night you have to be dressed up as a superhero and they're like why don't you guys just dress up in your superhero outfits and they're like then somebody could figure out who we are and they're like why don't you guys swap superhero outfits uh which is fine but then they're like oh well what about catwoman and lois lane like what are you just gonna be a reporter like this doesn't make sense so she's like i'll figure something out it's actually it's pretty hot um and it's really funny and it's really charming and just like i just love it because they're like you don't want this uniform's itchy and it's like oh you don't wash it that's why because it's gross and it's like oh he doesn't wash his batman uniform either and it's just like oh my god it's just so funny like everything and then like they're going to hit they're going to the batting cages and they're like oh it's too easy you know, and they're like, oh, I bet I could throw a baseball too fast for you. They're like, no, I know I would see it no matter what. You know, like, it's just everything about this is so great. There's a mugger, you know. It is just like, uh, it's just gold. It is just pure gold. It's just, I love Slice of Life. Slice of, slice of Life books are where it's at. And that's why I used to love Spider-Man so much is because it felt like a Slice of Life book. And then there was some random, like, Spider-Man stuff thrown in there that messed up his own personal life, you know. But anyways, that's besides the point. This is a blast because these are both characters that are in their suits a lot. And this is Slice of Life stuff. And they're bringing it to them. And it's just so funny. And it's so charming. And it's so great. And, like, the women, you can, the, the things they say, like, it sounds like, I swear, like, things my wife have said or, like, I've seen her, I've heard her and her friends say, or you know what I mean? Like, it just feels real. And and that's what I love about it. So this is a strong buying contender without a doubt. On to Champions number 15. This is a World's Collide Part 6. Uh, so they've like buried the, I think the body, the actual body of Viv Vision. And but uh and then but she's in like this 
this other world where the high evolutionary is and he's like well we could still go over to this new world you and i or or to your world we could go over we could cross over to your world you and i and stuff uh together and you know everybody's just dealing with the fallout of this they're very like you know they're very upset and they're you know uh nova's like i quit you know and stuff and like Viv is like, I'm not going to help you, High Evolutionary, to, to go over to the other side. Um, Vision is remaking Viv as an android. Uh, you have the, the you know, champions and the uh, Avengers. They duke it out. You know, everybody's emotional. But um, in the end, like, you have this really awkward and weird situation, you know, where it's like, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And, but people do it anyways. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a conundrum. I'm interested to see what happens and where it goes and everything like that. Yeah. So this book will continue, it appears. So, yeah, this is continuing the Champions book. Uh, it, it's really interesting, really solid. This one really worked. And, yeah, it was a great conclusion, I felt like. So yeah, I give it a strong buy, and I also give it a contender. I'll go ahead and give you the digital code. S for Senorita, V for Villanueva, K for Kilo, X for Xavier, O for Oscar, T or C for Carlos, Zero, F for Frank, Cavilla, Two, N for Novella, O for Oscar, um, and then H for Hector. Next book, X-Men Gold, number 18, Negative Zone War. It is part three. We have writer Mark Guggenheim, artist Ken Lashley, colorist Arif Prianto. And so, yeah, they're getting the, you know, the, the building fixed. And they're like, how much is going to be to be this filth? They're like, it's going to be super expensive. You're in, you know, you're in New York. This is in New York prices. You know, New York City, this is, this is the you know, Central Square or whatever. What is it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, and then it goes to the planet Darteus in the negative zone uh, with this guy uh, with, you know, you have Kurt, he teleported it out, but he teleported into an object. Then he teleported again out of the object really quick, so I don't know. It messed him up, but it didn't completely destroy him. But I think he would be dead, but he can't die because he was rejected from heaven because i think he yeah he just can't he can't go back because i think he's did something he made some deal um all the while they're like all right we'll make a deal with you if you leave we'll give you kitty pride back we'll give you nightcrawler back you know and but then they don't have nightcrawler so they're like oh you don't have nightcrawler and they're like oh you escaped probably so they're like oh you want us to leave because stuff's messed up here well we have to help and then yeah there's a big bet that shows up at the end i don't know who or what he is but he's a titan uh yeah so it's it's really crazy it's really interesting and i'm interested to see where it goes but it's not like it's it's in another dimension it's kind of like who cares but it's still the x-men doing their thing they have to do their thing everywhere they go not just earth or or you know wherever they're at so yeah um solid book like i said i can't wait to see more i can't wait to see what comes next so yeah, strong buy and a contender. Here's a digital code. O, K for kill, four, Q for quasar, H for hex, X for X-Men, R for Richter, E for echo, five, T for Thomas, X for X-Men, seven. Next is Spider Gwen, number 27, Gwenum. Uh, same creative team, I believe. No, it's a little bit different. Writers Jason Latour, artist Veronica Fish, and Olivia Margraf, uh, color artist Rico Renzi. So we have this detective, and he's a dirtbag. He's always been a dirtbag, but they've always he's always been able to get away with it and stuff. He shakes people down and stuff, and they're like, "All right, how do we deal with this guy?" You know, and it's like, so of course. Gwenum goes to kind of deal with him, but not as harshly as you'd expect. Uh, but I think somebody else is going to. Then it seems like 
Punisher wants to team up with Gwenum, uh, which is crazy. Uh, so to take down the Matt Murdock because they know he's the true villain here, but I'm not sure if she wants to or not do, do such a thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really crazy. Um, what's going down that one guy does get dealt with, uh, at the end, but there's somebody else who, um, yeah, it's, it's the, uh, you know, the Parkers are also looking for her. Um, and, and they, they do. Uh, I still don't look like, I still don't like the looker design of the Gwenum. And that's part of the reason that I'm not like too excited about this. I don't really know where it's going. This is a book that ebbs and flows, so I know that it would be better in trade. In fact, I should consider just switching to trade, but I don't know what it is about mainstream comics that are really hard to keep up in trade because I've been wanting to do Black Panther for a long time, but I'm way behind. I'm like four, I think I'm like four trades behind in Black Panther, and I know that's a phenomenal book, uh, as well as Doctor Strange. I know that's a phenomenal book as well. Um, Mighty Thor. You know, I know that's a phenomenal book. Those are all books that I want to get in trade because I know they would be better in trade. But I just, they, I've been, like I said, it's been hard to keep up with them. Uh, so and that's why I'm not sure if I should switch to trade for this because I don't know. I kind of do, don't, you know, I don't want to lose track of it because I love my Gwen, Gwen altogether. So, uh, anyways, um, I will give it a strong buy. I'm not giving it a contender. Uh, here's the digital code. O for Ocotillo, 7, W for Warita, 3, R for Rigoberto, 6, A, E for Iluterio, M for Marcos, P for Pedro, P for Pedro, C for Carlos. Now it's on to Old Man Logan, number 32. Ed Brisson is a writer. Mike Diodato Jr. is the artist. Frank Martin and Carlos Lopez are color artists. And so this one, it is Gorgon, and he is trying to revive somebody uh, from the dead. It's not working, and so there's some people that are, like, questioning it, and they're like, silence, you know, you must have faith. And so it does work. Then there it goes to a funeral, and Logan shows up to the funeral. I thought it was somebody else. That wasn't that person, so that the way that that was done was really good. Now it's this guy that was selling this drug that regenerates you. You can regenerate limbs and stuff, but it's not perfected. Uh, and so they make them use this on all the hand soldiers, I think, or hand foot soldiers, hand ninjas. Um, they put use it on them, uh, and then Logan uh you know of course gets attacked by gorgon as well as this lady that's been revived and they reveal who um she is but like i said that guy that i thought they that the scarlet samurai killed before uh and the, who's the few i thought the funeral was for is not for that person they did something else with that person um and so yeah it's it's really really crazy and in fact like i wonder if she's using a muramasa blade because there's a part where uh they cut off old man Logan's hand and I'm like, well, that went through the bone. And he even says it like that went through the bone pretty easy. So I'm wondering how that's possible. Um, so he's missing a hand right now. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm interested to see what comes next. This is really intense. This is really awesome. I love it. I love Diodato's art, like how he's, ch and he's always changing up his style, the way he does panels. And it's like usually thematic. You know the difference between like, oh, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. And you know all those different like things because he changes it up and it's not confusing in the least. It's brilliant. So strong buy and a contender without a doubt. So much so I'm going to hold on to this digital code. All righty. On to Guardians of the Galaxy, number 149. It's Infinity Quest. We have writer Gary Dugan, artist Marcus Toe, color artist Ian Herring. And so we have, uh, you know, this crew. We have some of the... We have this crew, and they're fighting off these evil Groots. Uh, Flora Colossus, I think, is what they are. And they, and they originally are evil, 
they originally were evil, but there's someone that's manipulating them. Um, and so that's what some of the Guardians, like we have Ant-Man, we have Groot, we have Gamora, and then some other Novas are dealing with that situation. And as they kill more of these Flora Colossus, Groot is getting bigger and bigger. And then it goes to what's going on. Like there's some Reaper stuff. They can't get the Nika Bands to work. Uh, but then the other one is Rocket and how they've like seeded out all these scumbags. And, and they're like, all right, we're imprisoning you. And then he talks to Adsit and he's like, guess what? All those scumbags, those are the guys that are actually not clean, but those are the ones that aren't the spies because spies try to be as clean as possible so that they won't get found out. So we're going to have to go release those guys, give them weapons so that now we can go take out the spies because now we know who the real spies are. It's all the guys that are too clean. And so uh, so it's going to be this epic battle against the Raptors and these Nova spies and stuff like that. So it's like they both think they have the hit on each other. And Ro I love Rocket Gears Up, and it just looks epic, and it looks awesome, and it looks so much fun. And uh, just brilliant writing here. Phenomenal storytelling through and through. It looks, looks superb. Uh, yeah, it's a strong buy. It's a contender. It's another book I'm going to hold on to the digital code for because just I'm just not sure. You know, I'm just not sure if it's it's runner up B bow material or not. You know, it's that good. Now I have Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider Man, number two ninety eight. Writer is Chip Zdarsky. Artist Adam Kuber and Juan Frigeri. Color artist Jason Keith. And so this one we have Spider-Man, Peter Parker specifically, and he is, uh, you know, he's in lockup, right? Or, you know, he's being interrogated, and this police officer's like, you know, hey, I don't think Spider-Man's a bad guy, you know, whatever. He's kind of giving an attitude to this cop, but he's just, the cop seems like a pretty good guy, but then there's this other dude that's from this secret agency, and he's like, oh, you know, all right, we're going to take you somewhere else where we can interrogate you. Then some other people show up with Ant-Man helmets to help him up, help them out and they're like all right we're just gonna switch places because they gotta cut me loose and then you see like this guy that's hanging out with aunt may and he's like being really nice and sweet uh you know and then he always gets you also get some a uh, jameson and is helping out with this plan as well too by hitting up herman schultz to find out what's going on they have another run-in with uh vulture and then and as well as whiplash shows up uh, then Black Panther, as the cover indicates, shows up to help out too, just because he's kind of in the area. And yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I can't wait to read the next issue. It's going to be superb. And yeah, it's 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 just going so well. This book is just being so well done. This is a strong buy. This is a contender. This is another digital code. I'm going to hold on until the end. Sorry, I know that's a lot of books that I'm holding on to, but I I have to. I don't have to, but I feel like it. Now it's uh, The Incredible Hulk number 711, Return to Planet Hulk. Writers Greg Pak, penciler Greg Land, inker Jay Leaston, colorist Frank D. Armata. And so this one picks up where it left off. We have Hulk, and he's fighting this metal machine, but this metal machine monster has is using human shields. And so you think that he's being stupid because they're like, yeah, don't hold back. Just just take him out, you know. And But Amadeus is playing it smart as Hulk. And so he essentially just does it. He takes some hits, takes some licks, so that this thing turns his back to him and then makes his attack so that he doesn't end up saving them. But in the process, one of this clan that he's fighting for decides to jump into the fight. And they're like, hey, if you don't jump out of the fight, we're gonna set you. We're gonna set you on fire, you know. And because he's an idiot and doesn't jump back, they uh, they torch him and stuff. But that was his own choice. Then they're like, all right, I want you to pull somebody else from the from the portal that's strong enough to face this Hulk because he's going through these, uh, you know, through these gauntlets and stuff pretty well and stuff. And even the next one, he's taking it out. You see, he fights like this giant crustacean crab thing you know uh but then somebody else shows up to fight him um that that looks a little unworthy he looks a little unworthy that's all i'm gonna say about that 
So this is another one that looks freaking phenomenal. I can't wait to read the next issue. This one is so great. Strong buy, strong contender. I was not caring for Amadeus, but this is the perfect situation to put him in to get him to that next level. Strong buy contender. And another book I'm going to hold on to, to, the, to the digital code. But worry not because that's a strong buy contender. It's also time for me to announce my runner-up and back and bag of the week. As said, there's a lot of superb books here. It's really, really hard to pick. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to have a difficult time um, choosing what because it's just so good. And so, yeah, it's just, it's so, oh, man. Well, let me see, let me see, let me see here. I'm going through my stack. Uh, oh, my God. So, I don't know. This 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 grand design has an unfair advantage of being way bigger than all the other ones. Um, so, that's kind of cheating. I don't know. So, I'm going to kind of like, this would probably be my back and bag, but I feel like it's cheating because it's so big. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like an annual, but I guess you could count annuals, but it's not an annual. Oh, Human Torch, that stuff was so good. Ah, oh, Batman is so much fun. Um, and everything like that. Oh my gosh, there's so many freaking good things here. It just freaking kills me to just only pick one thing. Um, but when it comes down to it, uh, I'm going to have to go with... I'm going to go with, um, shoot, this is so tough. I'm going to go with uh, Tales of Spence featuring Hawkeye and Winter Soldier as my runner-up uh, just because it's a one of five. Um, I, I love the way that Hawkeye's done in this. I love Winter Soldier. He's, he's easily one of my favorite characters. Um and so, and just the way that this is done is really intriguing, really awesome. It's also about like being in denial, you know, uh, and you can tell that, that Hawkeye is definitely in denial, uh, about Natalia or Natasha, whatever. Uh, so yeah. Um, and on, yeah, I'll, I'll give the digital code away for, for that book. Uh, you know, since I'm giving it away, um, so it's one V for Victor, X for X Men, H for Hank, eight H for Hank, one U for Ultron, and for Nova, G for Jack, Q for Quill, and for Nova. So yeah. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to go with Batman thirty seven for my back and bag of the week, just because it was so good. Like I said, I love this constant like. I love the constant uh, competition between Superman and Batman, especially because like one he has superpowers and then the other one has no superpowers. He's just like the peak excellence of humanity, and how he's like I can still take you, um, and it just goes back and forth. But it's not like an aggressive way. And oh man, Selina Kyle's so hot. This is just and you just see like couples, like how different couples are. And how they work. And, you know, like when you just see a perfect couple and you're just like, man, they're perfect. They're just so perfect. Like for each other. Like they may not be perfect on their own, but like for each other, they just work. You know, and you just see how they work. It's just freaking phenomenal and everything like that. So that being said, uh, I do have a few more books to give away. We have Incredible Hulk here, which was freaking epic as heck. Here's the digital code. Zero, nine, K for kill, F for fang, G for glorious, one, N for no, Q for quasar, J for jack, nine, two, S for Saiyan. Then I have uh, Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, which was so freaking well done. Another one. I can't wait to see what comes next. It's going to be epic. That's all I know. Um, I don't know why they keep on making Whiplash look weird. Uh, you need to get rid of that green hair. It's awful. But yeah, anyways, uh, here's digital code. F for Familia, Z for Zoro, M for Marcos, D for Diego, T for Tomas, H7, K for Kilo, E for Iluterio, V for 
Victor, H for Hector, D for Diego. I don't know. And now Guardians of the Galaxy, number 149. Here's the code for this one. Oh, man, it was just freaking brilliant. Uh, and then here's the digital code. F for Finn, Z for Zamboni, M for Milton, J for Jones, 1, 0, D for Dank, 7, 9, K for Kill, 3, and Z for Zarbon. And the last one, we have Old Man Logan, number 32. Here's the digit code for this one. Oh, it's just visceral, man, visceral, and it's messed up. Uh, so we have... F for Familia, Z for Zora, M for Marcos, G for Guillermo, P for Pedro, 4, 2, E for Iluterio, M for Marcos, G for Guillermo, X for Xavier, and 7. That is it for this comic book podcast. Please tell me what you think, what your back and bag was, what your runner-up is, uh, you know, any of the grades of the books uh, here, or especially if you got a digital code, I want to know what you thought of those books. Um... I do love people that share their reviews on Instagram. I've been getting into Instagram. Like I think Mason is one of them, I want to say, and he shares his reviews. And then some other guy, like I want to say CR Mac or something, or Mark, and he shares his reviews. Good stuff. I love that stuff. I'm not going to take the time to do that, but I like I like it in like those short bursts, you know, short burst reviews, you know, written stuff. I used to do that on Twitter, but I just don't have the time anymore. And so, yeah, but – uh. That's it for me for now, uh, you know, and I'm, I don't know if you all have noticed, but my life has been busy. I'm sure your lives have been busy. Uh, I want to do more stuff in the future, but at the same time, I want to pull back and do a little more me time. Uh, the wife has been really trying to talk me into taking time off from talk nerdy to me or just things period. Um, and I don't want to. I love doing this, but there are certain things that I just like, I have not had time to edit videos. I want to, I just haven't had time. Uh, there's a lot of video games that I have not played and I need to get cut up on. And I wouldn't mind turning that into content, but it's also that makes more work. So I want to keep doing the nerdy fitness thing. I just haven't had time to record one. Um, so yeah. And when I have time, I'll do it. And when it comes out, it comes out, you know, and that's that's just how it's going to be. Uh, weekly, I want to just start going for, like, weekly content where, hey, it's weekly and that's what it is. And, uh, you know, it's stuff that doesn't require too much editing, kind of like the videos for uh, Gamer Zone with Tone Bone where he, he does the Hearthstone. That doesn't require a lot of – and then really the, the, the fitness videos don't require that much editing either. There's some stuff that needs to be taken out, you know, just my, like, ums, ah, uh, you know – a lot of repetition stuff, but intro and outro mostly in the background music. I don't even have to put background music to the gamer zone. Uh, but yeah, like that's the thing is don't have to do that for a lot of stuff that, especially if it's video game related. Uh, and, but if it was just stuff that doesn't need to be edited or just needs, you know, a little audio or something here and there, then that wouldn't be bad either. So I want to geared more towards video games. That doesn't mean we're doing less comics. It just means we're probably going to do less, videos in general at least unless i can get somebody to help me with editing videos or until then until that point so uh, that's it for now i mean if you want to join in as part of the crew and help help edit or be part of the crew in any way shape or form by all means hit us up at tntm the show facebook website instagram tumblr um email hotmail gmail you know any of the avenues hit us up you know talk nerdy to me I'll talk nerdy to you and keep your eyes hungry for comics.